Welcome, and in this nugget, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use the Amazon command line interface in order to actually back up either our home personal Linux machines or write a backup script for our Linux instances. So I'm logged into my AWS control panel. I'm going to go ahead and select North Virginia because we're going to launch an EC2 instance. Our EC2 instance is going to simulate being our Linux machine. Now, we can very easily use our EC2 instance, our backup in EC2 instance with this script. Or we could do whatever machine we have. We could do this on a Mac machine, on our Linux desktops, on our Linux servers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to Identity Access Management. Now, I have a few options here. I can create a role and communicate with the Amazon S3 because we're gonna be backing up our Linux instance to Amazon S3 with the Amazon command line interface. Now, if you're gonna be running this on your EC2 instance, it is best practice to create a role, right? So the role we assign the EC2 instance and it'll have write privileges and read privileges to the Amazon S3 bucket. If you're doing this from your home machine, you're going to want to create API credentials and configure your AWS command line interface with those API credentials. So we're going to go ahead and use the API credentials in order to do this on our machine. I'm going to go to users and I'm just going to create a new user. I'm just going to call this user backup. I want to generate an access key for each user. And so I'll select create and then show my security credentials. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just download these credentials so I have them locally on my system. And then I'm gonna hit close. So now that we have this, I need to configure some policy for this. This user needs to have access to communicate with the Amazon Web Services S3 service. So if I don't have a group already for it, I can just attach a user policy. Now, since this user is going to have access to communicate with Amazon S3, let's browse down to Amazon S3 access. Now, when we're using Amazon Web Services, it's best practice to use least privileges. What this means is, is we should grant the least amount of privileges required to a user or a role that is needed to perform the operational function. Now, since our user needs read and write access, we're just going to go ahead and use only Amazon S3 full access. So I'm going to select select. So these API keys will only have permissions to communicate with the Amazon S3 service. Now I could create this a step farther. You notice how this has resource and then it says any resource. Well, each Amazon S3 bucket has an Amazon resource name. So if we were to go over to our Amazon S3 service in a different tab and create a new bucket, I'm just going to call this Linux Academy AWS CLI Backup, and I'm going to put it inside of the US standard region and select Create. So we have our bucket, and our bucket name here is Linux Academy AWS CLI Backup. So what I can actually do is I can say this user only has access to that specific AWS resource, but I have to use the resource name. So resource name starts with ARN, a single colon, and then our AWS namespace, then the single colon, the S3 service or namespace, and a triple colon with our bucket name, which is the Linux Academy CLI backup. So this would mean that this user's credentials would only have access to modify this individual bucket. But for simplicity, let's go ahead and just leave all buckets. And we have all actions to allow, and so we'll hit apply policy. So this user associated with the API keys that we created and downloaded now has permissions to communicate with the Amazon S3 service. So now that we have that done, we need to set up our Linux machine again. You could be following along on your Linux machine. We're just going to use an EC2 instance in order to configure this, but these steps will work fine on your Linux machine. Now, if you're going to go ahead and use an EC2 instance, you might consider configuring a role instead of just a user account. But let's say you're backing up a VPS from a different web hosting provider or on-premise servers or just your Linux machine, then we're going to want to use API keys. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the Amazon Linux AMI. Keep it basic and small for our demonstration here. I want to make sure that I enable the public IP address so I can connect to it. I'm going to select next. 
next, next, and we'll also go ahead and review and launch. And then click next again. And let's launch our instance. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that we create a key pair that we can communicate with. So I'm gonna just call it backup EC2 as my key pair. And I'm gonna download that key pair. And we're gonna launch our instances. So this step is not required if you're not using an EC2 instance to back it up. However, since we're using an EC2 instance to back it up, we do need to go through this process. Now, if you're not familiar with this process and this, go check out our AWS courses. We have a ton of AWS certification courses that go over all of these details. These nuggets are meant to show you how to do independent actions that aren't certification or course related. So while this is starting up, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my local host. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate into my CD slash home, Anthony user, and then into my downloads directory because that's where my backup ec2.pem file is. Now I need to make sure that this has proper executable permissions, but not too many permissions as it won't allow us to connect to it if it has too open of permissions. So I'm gonna change the permissions to just read and write and for the owner and no permissions for the group or other users on the system. And then we're gonna set that on our, our backup ec2.pem. So let's go check the progress of our EC2 instance. Now that this is available, let's just go ahead and connect to it. I'm just gonna copy my connection string from the connect option above. Then we go ahead and paste it inside of here. I'm in the same directory as my backup ec2.pem, so I should be able to connect to it no problem. So I've connected to the Amazon EC2 Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and operate as the root user by typing sudo su dash. The dash, of course, has us use a login shell, so it also loads our profile options. So I'll hit clear. Now we need to install PIP. So I'm gonna do a yum search PIP. And you notice here we have our Python. Let's see what current Python version we are. We're current Python 2.6.9. So let's download the yum install Python dash, Python 2.6 dash PIP. That's gonna install the pip tool. Now the pip tool is required in order for us to download the Amazon command line interface. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so we can see the console a little bit better. Now on the Amazon command line interface, depending on the distribution you're running, there's multiple ways to install this. Now, primarily you'll just wanna install the Python pip program. If you're using apt-git, you can do an apt-git update and then an apt-cache search for PIP. We need to make sure that we download the PIP program or just download the AWS command line interface and install it from the package. Now that Python PIP is installed, all I have to do is a PIP install AWS CLI for the Amazon Web Services command line interface. So we notice that it's been successfully installed. So now that it's installed, I can just type AWS configure and I can configure my command line interface to communicate with Amazon S3. So this takes us back to when we generated or created our user API keys from the IAM console. So first we had our access key ID. That access key ID, let's go ahead and just open up a browser here. It was in my download section. And then if I open up my credentials, I can copy my access key. My access key is gonna be my first one here. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it inside of where it's asking for my access key. Then it's gonna ask for my secret access key. And this gives us permissions for that individual user. This API keys only have administrative privileges to S3. They don't have access to any other AWS service. We'll hit enter. Now we need to set the default region. When we created our S3 bucket, we used the US standard region, which is US East one. And then I'll hit enter. And then our default option format or return format is, for example, do we want it in JSON. Do we want it in XML? I'm just gonna use this as none and then hit clear. How do I know if this works now? I can type AWS, S3 for the S3 service and then LS. 
which if our service is working correctly, we should see the buckets currently located inside of our AWS S3 console. So if we head over to our AWS S3 console, we see our buckets here. Now, since I have read write privileges to this, we can do anything with these buckets. Now, the other thing I wanna show you, since we used API access keys, we do not have to be running this on an EC2 instance. This could be on an instance on your on-premise network. It could be your local machine. It could even be an Android device that you managed to install the AWS CLI interface on. Now inside of Amazon, we can have more granular permissions. We can say requests must come from a specific IP address range. Currently, we're saying anybody who has these AWS API keys can communicate with those credentials for the backup user we created in IAM. But using IAM policies, we could say if they have the API keys and they're coming from an on-premise IP address range that we have specified. So now that we have this, how do we create our backup? We're going to create an automated backup using cron. You can use Anacron so that it automatically backs up every n number of days, for example, five days, rather than backing up during a time period like cron tab does. So first, we need to be aware of how the command works. So we can use regular Linux commands like find. We can find specific files on our root file system, maybe ones that have a name that end with mp3. Then once we have that, we can perform the exec command and then copy those files over to our AWS backup as a backup. Or we could back up just directories. In this case, I'm gonna back up my entire var slash log directory, everything located inside of here. So in order to do this, let's just first test our command. Do I wanna back it up or do I wanna sync changes? Now in this case, I don't wanna apply changes from S3 if they've been updated to my EC2 instance. I only wanna copy the changes here to Amazon S3. So I have two ways of doing this. I can use AWS S3 sync, which is gonna only sync the files that have changed, but it works two ways. If somebody's modified data inside of your S3 bucket, it'll sync it back to your EC2 instance, but nobody else should have access to that S3 bucket. So we're probably gonna use sync, so that way we're not copying the data every time unless the data has changed. But let's go ahead and take a look at AWS S3 help. If we browse to the bottom, we see that we have the option for copy, move, remove, or sync. So we're just gonna sync. I'm just gonna very simply type AWS S3 because I'm calling the S3 program of the AWS command line interface. Then I want to sync everything in slash var slash log to S3 colon Linux Academy dash AWS CLI dash backup. I wanna sync it to that location and I'll hit enter. So it says that it successfully synced all of the changes. If we head over to our S3 console or actually let's continue using the command line interface. I'll type AWS S3 LS. I wanna list the contents inside of my Linux Academy AWS CLI backup bucket. So if you notice, we now have all of the log files that are inside of our local machine inside of the S3 bucket. And again, I can view them in the console for visual aspect as well. Here they are. So how do we automate this? Let's go ahead and navigate up to our sync command and copy it. We have two options. First, we're gonna go into the Etsy directory. We can either use cron to automate this or anacron. Now, if you're running this on your local machine, I want you to consider Anacron. One of the limitations of Cron is, is that it will execute a command at a given time period only if your machine is running. So if your machine is not running, say we schedule it to execute the backup the first day of every month, and the machine is turned off on that first day, it's not gonna back up until the following month. It completely misses its backup window of opportunity. So what might be another way to ensure that even if our machine is turned off, that our machine is backed up or servers backed up every five days or every 30 days? Well, that alternative is Anacron. Anacron will execute the job, the backup, every n number of days. So inside of my Etsy directory, and you have to make sure you're the root user because Anacron only works with the root user. You'll do a VI 
and a cron tab, and then hit enter in the Etsy directory. So first it says, how many days do we need to run this backup? Anacron is run once a day. So how, and how many days do we wanna back this up? So I wanna back this up every five days. Now, how many minutes do I wanna wait before the job starts? We can just say five, it can be zero, it could be 30. It just says, after we call the job, wait that number of minutes before the job starts. Then let's go ahead and give this job a job identifier. I'm gonna call it backup script to AWS. Then what's the command that we want this to execute? I'll go ahead and paste in our AWS S3 sync from our backing up the var slash log to the S3 directory. And then let's go ahead and save and exit. Now what's gonna happen is, is Anacron next time it runs, it's gonna say, hey, has this job been executed in the past five days? And it knows that because it looks inside of the var spool Anacron directory. Inside of here, do we see a name of our job yet? Well, we don't because the job hasn't run. So next time Anacron runs, it's gonna run our backup. Before we demonstrate this, let's go ahead and just remove some of the files inside of our bucket. So we have removed most of the files. So next, I'm just gonna force Anacron to run regardless of its timestamp. So to do that, I just type Anacron-N. Now again, I'm forcing this so we can demonstrate it. If we were to leave it, it would automatically back up every five days. It would actually back up the next time Anacron ran because there's nothing saying it's backed up yet. So we run Anacron-N. We do an LS and we now see our job here. If I run a cat on my backup script to AWS, we see that the last time it was run was on February 11th, 2015. If we go take a look at our AWS console, hit refresh, we see that it's put everything back in there because it ran our backup. And that's how we can use the Amazon command line interface and Anacron to back up our Linux machine, regardless if it's a virtual private machine, an EC2 instance, or your Linux desktop. So that concludes it for this nugget. Let's go ahead and complete and find another nugget.